Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about Bitcoin. So after a nice period of expansion from late January of this year up through March, we've now had about a month and a half of sideways to relatively weak price action for Bitcoin. And this has made a lot of people quite worried looking at this, thinking that this is going to be a local top, somewhat reminiscent perhaps to what happened back here in 2019, a big run up and that we're going to go down, down, down to have a very nasty correction coming off of this point. And it's certainly possible that could be the case. But what I wanted to talk about was why this weakness is actually not at all surprising. Then what we should look for to think that it's going to end and that a resumption to the upside might be coming. So let's go ahead and get into that. So the first thing I want to talk about is why we might think that this was reasonable. And one of the things we can look at or think about is what are the broader conditions in the market and why that might suggest that some price weakness or at least consolidation correction here for Bitcoin is quite logical. One of the things I wanted to talk about first was the connection between Bitcoin and the dollar, the DXY, which is basically the strength of the US dollar relative to a basket of other fiat currencies. And what you'll note, what's been talked about a lot in the crypto space is this robust negative relation between the dollar and Bitcoin, where generally speaking, when the dollar is doing well in an uptrend, Bitcoin is often doing poorly. And then when the dollar does poorly, Bitcoin tends to do well. So there's this nice inverse correlation that tends to follow between Bitcoin's price and where the DXY is currently sitting. So based on this, what you can actually do and what we have done is create models that get at the fair value of Bitcoin based on what the DXY is doing. And that's what I'm showing you here. This is the DXY based fair value for Bitcoin. So this is a model that we have here at the channel and of course at our website, claritydigital.io, link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And basically what it's doing is it's giving you a fair value line. Basically, where would you expect Bitcoin to be or where is the expected or kind of fair value price for Bitcoin based on what the DXY is doing or what the dollar is doing? And you see, it does a really good job of identifying these periods, for example, when Bitcoin is quite undervalued and that tends to rally up into the fair value. And then at a certain point, when you get above fair value and you're too overextended, it'll revert back down to fair value. And that tends to be a pretty robust relation across time. And in fact, we just put on this formula here. I'm just going to highlight this is the periods at which Bitcoin has been undervalued relative to its DXY based fair value. And you can see that this has been pretty much throughout this whole period, pretty good value times for Bitcoin that was undervalued. It tends to be a good time to be acquiring. So I'm going to pop this back up on top of here. So more recently to zoom in, one of the reasons why I got so bullish on Bitcoin through here, really going into 2023 and then this whole run up was that one of the pieces of data I was looking at was the fair value based on the DXY. And I was noticing that it was quite undervalued, even as it was rallying into that year, it remained quite undervalued, suggesting that Bitcoin had some more price appreciation to go. Then Bitcoin rallied a bit above its fair value here, but then the fair value jumped above, suggesting that Bitcoin was again undervalued and indeed up we went. And now we're currently sitting at overvalued territory. So when you think about, does it make sense for Bitcoin's current weakness to be showing up? Yes, it absolutely does. We are over the fair value. And so what I would actually like to see is the fair value start to increase and get back up to the upside and then maybe price can follow along with it. But currently we're not in that situation. We're not currently well below fair value like we were all the way through here or over here, for example. We now seem to be above it. So some weakness based on that makes a lot of sense. Now, at some point, if we really are in a bull market and we're going to continue that, at some point you would expect us to get well extended above the fair value and you can move pretty decently above it. But then you will tend to eventually fall off. And so when you get up to that point, like in these prior cycles where you're clearly above fair value, there's not that long that you can go before you come back and revert to it, historically speaking. When you get to that point, that suggests you might actually be at the cycle top. So in a lot of ways, when we look at the more recent price action here, it's a good thing that Bitcoin is not just continuing to rip above fair value, because that might suggest that we're getting near some kind of a cycle top. And I don't know about you, but if we topped out at 80K, for example, the cycle, that would be a bit underwhelming relative to where we might be able to go if Bitcoin is able to track more closely with something like its fair value. If it doesn't get so ahead of itself that it blows itself out too early, and then it leads to a premature end of the cycle. Talked about this a lot, that in this current moment, I actually think it's healthier for the market to be taking a break because when you get to these really overextended periods, it tends not to end well. You tend to go into big bear markets. 
So I actually like the fact that Bitcoin is not just ripping to the upside here, because that would be much more concerning if we got up to some a point like this, suggesting that the top might be in. And I was also talking about this a lot with one of our other models that we have on our site and here at the channel. And this is our upside downside potential indicator or UDPI. It's a risk model. And this is the long-term version that cares about moves the play out over months to multiple months. So longer term in its time horizon. And so this is a risk model. So higher values mean higher risk, lower values mean lower risk. And what you'll notice is that when you get really high up on this metric, you're basically right around or right at the cycle top. That by the time that happens, you're basically at about as high as a price as you can hope for or very close to it. And then a big bear market tends to follow not too long afterwards. One of the things I was talking about a lot as we got up here, right as Bitcoin was up above 70K, was, man, I really don't want to see Bitcoin just continue to rip from here because that might mean that risk will get up to these super high levels, which historically has not been a good thing at all. And that is actually often heralded in that big bear market. I was saying at the time, I would prefer Bitcoin to continue taking a break, longer term consolidation even, to let risk cool back off. So that whenever it's ready to rally again, we're starting from a lower level and we have way more room to work with before we get up to these really high levels that could spell some problems. So that was one of the things that I was watching very closely with risk. And fortunately, in some ways, I think this is actually a good sign because we've now seen risk start to cool off notably. And I think this can continue to cool off more. And the further it goes, the more room Bitcoin has to work with to the upside, that is not necessarily an unsustainable way. That has more room to work before it might actually eventually get to that unsustainable point. But that importantly could be at a higher price now that Bitcoin has started doing this than it would have been if we just continued ripping to the upside here. That that would have been a much more unsustainable path. This might be a more sustainable path. Again, assuming we're still in a bull market and that more upsides to come. Not financial advice, of course, you should make your own opinions of these data, but that's my thinking about it in that longer term. Another piece of data we can look at that also suggests that Bitcoin is in a pretty reasonable place, or at least expected place in a bull market, is our momentum bias indicator. So this model, like the name suggests, cares all about momentum in the market. And is it biased to the upside, meaning that upside momentum just wins out the day and keeps pulling price up, up, up? or bias to the downside where price just keeps getting sucked down, 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 and down. And so what you can look at with this model is how is it behaving? You'll see distinct phases of behavior at different parts of the market cycle. In a bull market, you're gonna spend a lot more time up with the green and in the red and just brief blips down into the red before going back to the upside. In a bear market, the exact opposite. Most of your time in the red with just very brief blips up into the green. Then you have these periods of transition out of the bear market into the bull market, which is this kind of oscillation around zero. And the way that this metric works is that zero is the average momentum that's been in the market. So for Bitcoin, that's obviously positive. And then the units above and below are in standard deviations. It's a Z-score metric. And so when you're oscillating around zero like this, it's actually a bullish sign because you're kind of tracking in general that overall positive momentum that Bitcoin has seen. And that's where you kind of get this general kind of more slower paced bull market kind of behavior building into the big bull market move. We saw the exact same thing happen through here in 2023. Oscillation around zero, and then boom, we started that kind of expansion going up through here. So what I'd like to see is this kind of continue. We dip down into the red. I'd like to see this not last too terribly long, go back up to the green, and that would very much just track with prior cycles. I do think it's possible we're moving out of kind of the main part of this transition period and more into the bull, if that's really the trajectory we're heading into. And for that to be consistent, we'd like to see this reverse before too terribly long back to the upside. But we'll have to watch it. We could spend a decent amount of time down here and it'd still be totally fine for the bull market. What I wouldn't want to see is us getting deep, deep, deep into the red like we do in bear markets. That would be much more concerning, but certainly we're not there yet. Something I'm going to watch. So that's where I think we are in the broader scope of things. That I think right now Bitcoin had gotten overextended above its fair value based on the DXY, which is really tracking bigger, broader macro factors. And with that robust correlation with Bitcoin, very useful information it can provide. And so some weakness here makes sense as we kind of track back down along with fair value, which has also been declining. We also see with long-term risk that we've gotten really extended here and in fact, I think it's a much healthier dynamic that's playing out now where this is being allowed to reset as Bitcoin consolidates here. And then, of course, we still are on track with that bull market thesis from the MBI's perspective, though we'll have to, of course, watch this closely. 
so to wrap up then what i want to talk about is what can we look at to get an idea of when that impulse could be starting so assuming we're in a bull market and bitcoin is going to have that reversal at some point back up into the green what could be an early sign of that and our trend confidence indicator at tci can give a really good insight into this idea so basically the way that you want to interpret this model is how is it moving relative to price so if the tci starts moving up that's a good sign and oftentimes price will then move up along with it but if you're having price moving up and then the tci starts to move down aggressively that's a concerning sign suggesting that some weakness is entering and a correction is likely and in this move that we had here from january through to march the exact same thing played out we had the tci move up aggressively here price then followed it then the TCI started moving down aggressively, and now price has been nothing but weak ever since. So what I would like to see to get a better sense of when an uptrend might be forming is do we get a strong reversal on the TCI here? Do we get the TCI moving up aggressively? And that might be an early indication that that next impulse might be forming. And so then if we're having that, when, for example, long-term risk has cooled off a bunch, when maybe we're also seeing momentum start to reverse back to the upside, and then especially if we start seeing fair value looking more favorable, those would be signs that we might be then getting that next potential expansion if the bull market is really ready to resume. And currently my base case is that we are still in a bull market. Obviously macro factors, everyone can look at those and get fearful and bearish. I don't think we've seen market structure break down enough at this point to get too overly concerned. There's something of course to watch. And of course, something that could derail this whole thing is if we do have like a recession or some big catastrophe in broader markets, that would not be a good look for Bitcoin, most likely. But I don't think we're there yet, personally. I think the data don't suggest that it's yet time to panic. And so that's what I'm going to be looking for. That's consolidation very well could continue, especially as long as Bitcoin remains above fair value. But at some point, I would not be surprised to see things reverse and Bitcoin to be able to maintain a next leg up. So not financial advice, you should make your own opinions. But those are my broader thoughts about Bitcoin right now. So if you like the content or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us over on X. A lot of updates with our models and more over there. You can go to our website, PlarityDigital.io to see live data for our models and more.